Oh, yeah. You know what time it is. Time for everybody's favorite post-podcast podcast. That's right. It's Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute. Did you say post-podcast podcast? I did. But we didn't have a podcast. We didn't. <laughs> well, what, are we, what are we doing? What are we I doing right now? What are we doing? <laughs> uh, as Webby said, though, this is Dinkin' Around with Eddie and Webby. Usually this follows a podcast where we have an amazing guest, right? But today, we just felt like hanging out with Webby and me. And so, you know, why not just do Dinkin' Around? We don't have to always have a podcast. We can just dink around, right? right? We don't have to have awesome guests all the time, don't, do we? <laughs> no. I don't think so. But we are the awesome guests. We're the guests of each other. You're my guest tonight, and That's I'm right. your guest. How does that sound? That is right. I'm going to interview you so hard tonight. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that and means. Not, not in a weird way. Not, not in a weird way. In a totally normal, friendly way, right? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, as you guys know, thinking around with Eddie Webby, it's raw. It's uncensored. And uh, it's fun. And who knows? Maybe you, yes, you, if you want to come on to the show a little bit later, you might have the chance to, as long as you have a smartphone or laptop with a good internet connection, has to have a camera, and preferably some headphones for good quality audio, we might be able to get you on the air. So go ahead and reach out if that's something you would be interested in. Um, we've only had one show where, where we hadn't had anybody come on, and so we'll see. Yeah, so... Just keep tuning in because anybody, anybody can join us. Like you could join us, you could join us, and you, even you. Yep, that's right. Uh, guys, guess what? We are live. We are live on Facebook. We are live on Twitch. We are live on YouTube. And this is meant to be interactive as well. So go ahead and if you want to make a comment, ask a question, add anything to what we're talking about, go ahead and throw that in there, right? That's right. And uh, as always, we love for people to be interactive. We've already got a comment on Facebook. Ian Moss said, what up, fellas? Didn't get a chance to say hi to you guys in Kalamazoo. How's it going, Ian? Um, What's up, Ian? Yeah, I've got, a, I've got a lot to talk about in regards to what went down in Kalamazoo. So that'll be in a little bit. Um, but yeah, I've got a lot to talk about in regards okay. to Kalamazoo and pickleball. Yeah, it sounds like it was an awesome, awesome weekend. Okay. Super yes. excited to hear more about it. Um, what else is going on with you? Have anything new, man? Oh, man. Where do I even begin? I know um, where you begin. Where's that? By um, us having a, <laughs> a liquid beverage of some sort. Uh, yes. I forgot all about that. We're all, we're all throwing off right now. Jeez. Right. Yeah, this is crazy. Like, if anybody yeah. ever thought that this uh, dinking around show was uh, was scripted, I think this is proof right here. We just we just decided to uh, to do a show, and here we are. But man, liquid a liquid beverage as opposed to a solid <laughs> beverage sounds perfect right now. <laughs> yeah, I would not want a solid beverage. Um, but what uh, what beverage of the liquid form are you gonna have tonight? All right. So I carefully selected tonight's beverage because. In just a week from tomorrow, as a matter of fact, it's the big Beer City Open in Grand Rapids, yeah. and the tournament, the uh, the beer sponsor for the tournament is none other than Perrin Brewing, so I figured tonight would be a fabulous night to drink something from Perrin Brewing, and what That's I have awesome. today is a beer called 98 Problems IPA. Nice. So you got I got 98 problems. Ah, you were going to say it, weren't you? Ah, you were going to say it. <laughs> you can do it. You can finish it. You're better at that. If you're having gill problems, I'll feel bad for you, son. I got 98 problems, but a beer ain't one cuz I got a beer right here. It's going to be a tasty yeah. one. Nice. I do like that beer. I have had it before. Um still my favorite beer from Perrin is Soup's Juice, but I also like Perrin Black. Anytime I see that, oh, you got a gusher? <laughs> I did have a little bit of a gusher. <laughs> I tried to save it. I tried uh, to save it, uh, but yeah, it, uh, there's a little bit of spillage going on here, but it's not too yikes. bad. Yikes, yikes, yikes. Well, cool. Well, um, that was a good idea getting Perrin. I'm down in Florida right now. I can't have Perrin. Perrin down here. Well, I can't get it down here. Uh, I did drink a lot you. of Perrin. I know it does. I, I wish I could. But I did drink a lot of Perrin when I was up in Grand Rapids just a couple of weeks ago for those couple of weeks. 
Uh, but it's actually kind of funny. What I'm drinking tonight is in, is uh, inspired by a comedy clip that our friend John Davison posted on Facebook about White Claw. Do you know what White Claw is, Webby? I do. So I had never had hard seltzer before until a couple weekends ago when I was actually in Shorts Brewery, Shorts Brewery up in Bel Air, Michigan for my cousin's wedding, right? We went there. It was awesome. Had a great time. And they they made their own seltzer there. And... That was the first time I ever had like real craft seltzer. And so I kind of went on this kick to try and find like what's a good hard seltzer to get. Because personally for me, I like the idea of having a beverage kind of during a tournament or for social pickleball play that might not kind of hold you down as much as a beer can, you know, can feel a little heavy. And so I thought mm-hmm. maybe I'll give it a try. And I got to tell you, I am loving what I am finding. So there's two tonight oh. that I'm going to be drinking uh, and I'm going to be able to do a little comparison of them. The first one is truly hard seltzer, which is uh, blueberry and acai. Is that how it's pronounced? I, I've heard some people say acai. I've heard some people call acai. it acai. I don't know. Anyway, that's going to be the first one I'm going to drink. And then nice. the th- this one does have added sugar in it, though, which I'm not a big fan of. Then I also have Henry's, which is... Uh, a little bit less alcohol, 4.25%. No sugar added, a little bit less calories, which is which is always good in my opinion. So I'm going to be drinking those, and then I can give you my honest review of them. And who knows? Maybe uh, maybe we'll have to have some of these during the Beer City Open. Very nice. And a fun fact here, uh, Andrea Coop just left us a message and said, we are going to have hard seltzer in our Perrin Beer Garden next week. Nice. Well, actually, they were going to have hard seltzer there from Perrin, but... I think I'm going to buy them out of it in the first hour. So you'll have to get <laughs> nice. to the to the beer tent as soon as you can, guys. So I've never had the Henry's that you have, but I have yeah. had some of the stuff from Truly, and it is pretty tasty stuff. I don't think I haven't had the Akai Asai berry that you have, but uh, <laughs> I've had some of the others, and uh, I'm a fan. Okay. I'm a, I'm a fan. Well, hopefully, hopefully it's good. Let's try it. Hmm. Mm. Yeah. Very tasty. Very, very tasty. I'm liking it. Mm. And my beer is very tasty as well. So cheers, my friend. It's been a while since we've uh, just been the two of us here on the show. It's like old times. It is like old times. Um, Oh, Andrea, Andrea Coop just said, we don't care how we sell out as long as we do. All right. There we go. (laughs) Nice. Yeah, I really don't think that's a problem. Challenge accepted, (laughs) Andrea. Hmm. Yeah, that is uh, that is not going to be a problem. No. Oh man, so what? I I know I asked you originally what was going on, and then I totally derailed us down the liquid beverage conversation. <laughs> but seriously, man, what what is new with Webby? Oh man, uh, so I'm just gonna get right into it. This past weekend, I had one of the most fun times I've had during a pickleball tournament weekend. Yeah. Um, and I've had a lot of fun times. Both of you, you and I have both had some excellent times together. We've each had some excellent times separate from each other. But mm-hmm. yeah, I've got to tell you, this past weekend, I was at the Great Lakes Regional Pickleball Tournament in Kalamazoo, Michigan. And oh my God, that was amazing. It was such a great time. Uh, I met some some pros. I hung out some, with some of my pickleball friends, um, played some intense matches, watched a whole bunch of great 5.0 matches. And uh, it's just the entire weekend from beginning to end was was unbelievable. I loved it. And uh, yeah, I just uh, I can't say enough about how much fun I had and how awesome it was. Yeah, I could tell you were having a good time because I, you know, it was it was so cool. Like I kept getting texts from you like, oh, I just ran into this person. I just saw this. match. Yeah. It was so cool. Like you could tell just how psyched up about the event you were. Yeah. So it, like as soon as I step foot in the place, um, you you go up these. You're, you go to the entrance, and then you're just right there, right in the action. You can see a bunch of the pickleball courts, and it's just every court jam-packed full uh, with intense pickleball matches going on. And it was mixed doubles day, the day that I got there. And uh, it's just, it's just, the whole place was packed. There were tons of people watching the matches, tons of people, tons of people playing them. How, how many and, courts uh, were there? Oh, man. Um, there were at least 18. Uh there might have been even more than that. I can't. I can't remember the exact number, but I know there was at least eighteen. Um, I'm just trying to I'm trying to think of how high the numbers went for the actual court numbers. Uh, I can't remember exactly. I don't have the answer to that question, but we'll just let's say at least eighteen. Okay. Um, 
but they uh like I knew Cassandra Gerke was there and that was I wanted to make sure that I met her uh, in person because I had never done that she's been on the show a couple times and uh, and we we chat somewhat regularly and uh, like I feel like I I know her very well uh, can we both consider her a right. great friend um, but when I saw that she was going to be there I was like man that's like one of my priorities is to meet Cassandra Gerke in person so I asked a couple people if they knew where she was playing by any chance because it was mixed doubles day and I got there when I knew it was shortly after her division started so I, I had a feeling she was probably playing at that time um, and the, the people that were around me they weren't quite sure what court she was playing on so I just decided to just take a look at walk walk down and check out some of the courts and there was this real long hallway and on each side of the hallway were like cur- the curtains with doorways to go into the area where the pickleball courts were um, so I, I checked the, I was like peeking through each one as I went by. And then, uh, I finally found the court that she was playing on. So I worked my way over there and I had the camera in hand. So I got to record some awesome footage of that. Uh, and then I got introduced to, or I, I met her in person after the match, talked to her for a bit. And I watched her and Zane, they were playing together and man, they were, they were on fire. They were playing excellent together. I, I watched them get a few victories. Uh, that was so cool. And I think we actually have a, a photograph of uh, of Cassandra and I, and there it is. The technology is amazing on the show. I <laughs> talked about a photograph, and there's the photograph. How awesome is that? So but yeah, that, I mean, just, yeah, that, that she's area super that you nice, guys are super nice. Yeah, um, yeah, I, I met her a couple of times, U.S. Open, and then Florida Grand Slam. So real quick, so that area that um, that you guys are at, like there, like is that overlooking all of the courts? Could you see all the action from there? You could see one half. So there's okay. there were two two sides of pickleball courts. You could see the larger the, the larger side. Like this side had more courts than the other side. So you could see the the half that had the most courts on it. So you could see a tons of action on that side. Um she actually was not playing on that side. So I had to go mm. down the hallway and go on the courts that were on the left side. Okay. Um, and that's where I found her. And uh yeah, she is super nice. Just uh just as nice as she seems through Facebook in her posts and stuff. She was even much nicer in person. Uh, it was just, it was awesome to meet her and it wasn't, it wasn't weird at all. Like I seriously felt like I've known her for years. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the first time that we, that we met each other in person. So usually I'm a little on the awkward side when I meet somebody for the first time, but with her, it, it just felt natural. It felt like we were good friends just hanging out. So very nice. cool, very fun times. Um, so then uh, after I watched her and Zane play a couple matches, then all of a sudden, here comes our good buddy DJ Howard. He's getting ready for a match of his. And I think we have a, a picture of him as well. Uh, there he is. So wow. that was actually right after he had finished playing a couple matches because I, I saw him like right before he was getting into it. So I didn't want to look like he was in the zone. So I didn't want to inter- interfere with what was going on there. But I recorded some footage of his match and that was awesome. Super right. fast paced, intense match. So that was very cool. And then while he was playing, I look to the right, and here comes Dave Weinbach, and uh, and he and Stephanie were playing some games together, and uh, I think we have another picture of Dave and I. There he is, super nice guy, man. <laughs> very intense while playing pickleball. Um, he <laughs> very intense guy, yeah. uh, but when he's not playing pickleball, like he is one of the nicest guys you'll ever talk to. Uh, so passionate about the sport, so that was very cool. That's and, what I've uh, heard. That's I've I've heard that in real life. He's super nice, very friendly, and you can tell. Like you know, I've I've heard him on some videos before, and I heard him live streaming at the Atlanta Open. And you could just tell he was a very nice, personable type of guy. But you're right oh, on yeah. the court, man. The guys, the guys, <laughs> intense. Oh yeah, he's got like there's like that switch. As soon as he steps foot on that court, he flicks the switch, Boom. and he's off. The badger goes into the badger, badger mode. Comes out. <laughs> ah, is this what a, I don't think? Is this what a badger does? Is he ah? Do they, I don't think they do. That's like a bear. Like what does a badger do to attack? I think they're just like. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. I've never I've never seen a badger in person, to be honest. Other if than some, Dave Weinbach. If somebody could please explain to us how a badger attacks, that's so that's what it's like when Dave goes out there, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We need somebody to connect with us live just to just to show us what a badger looks like <laughs> when they attack. Yeah. Please do yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, so so friggin' awesome. Um, the the level of quality of the matches I watched it was just. I was blown away. Like I just, I couldn't stop watching like for mixed doubles day. I wasn't playing that day, 
Um, I was there for about four or five hours. The time just flew by super fast and, uh, it was crazy, but then is, uh, is this is this like your first tournament that you've gone to since the Beer City Open last year that you've seen that level of play that close up? Yes, it is. You yeah. and I did the Dink for Pink, uh, but that was a little different because that was yeah. a, that was a charity event that was more fun than right. anything. Um, there was definitely high level play, but that was like everybody was in costumes, mm-hmm. wearing pink, and it was just a very fun experience. Um, not quite the same intensity as a as a full blown tournament. So yeah, this this was the first time that I was uh, in the presence of of greatness since the Beer City Open last year, and I didn't even appreciate what we were in the presence of last year because I didn't know who any of the pros were. Well, that's kind of what I wanted to point out is that you know last year we had no first of all we didn't even know what good pickleball looked like. Like we thought we mm-hmm. were good. We thought we were good players last year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we had yeah. no, we had no freaking <laughs> idea what good pickleball play looked like. So, I, I I so wish I could go back in time, man. But anyway, <laughs> right? Uh, it's 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 cool. It the, uh, I got the opportunity a couple of times to see it firsthand. Like the the first time you see up close, personal, in your face, super high level pickleball, it's pretty amazing, right? Oh yeah, and it, what was even crazier to me is the fact that like I was able to just stand or sit right next to mm-hmm. all the action. Like as long as there's a open space, they like they're all good with you. Just as long as you don't interfere with the match, just sit down or stand there and watch, cheer them on. It's incredible. Yeah, talk trash to them, try and distract. Oh them, yeah, right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I like to do. But uh, yeah, like I was saying, like the the. I was there for like four or five hours. The time just flew by super fast. And I actually, I was hoping to watch uh, Cassandra and Zane in their gold medal match because they they made it quickly to the gold medal round. They were just waiting to see who was going to make it through the opportunity bracket uh, to face them for the gold medal. And unfortunately, I needed to get going before they even started. Uh, but it was for a good reason. Our good buddy, Matt Loria, was doing a comedy show in Grand Rapids that night. Uh, so I needed to leave and go to the place I was staying at so I could unload all my stuff and get cleaned up for it. And, uh, man, it was so cool to finally see Matt Loria do a comedy act. Uh, yeah. I, I love going to comedy shows. And then to see a good friend of yours do, do stand-up comedy, man, that was very cool. I know. I'm jealous, man. I have wanted to see him do that. The, we were in Grand Rapids for two weeks. And I reached out to him and I was like, oh, man, if you if you have a, a set that you can do, man, I would love to be able to go and see you uh, to see you perform. But unfortunately, he had a wedding the weekend of the Meyer State Games and just couldn't couldn't come through. So when he told me you were going to go see him perform live, I was like, ah, jealous, man. Super <laughs> jealous. Yeah. So I went and watched him and uh, a few days beforehand. I, I was like, hey, do you think it'd be cool if I recorded just a little bit of video of you, like maybe before your set or after your set? Um, just for the highlight video, because I always like to recap and do like a vlog, a vlog type video of every tournament experience that I do. And he was like, "Hell yeah, man!" He's like, "If you want to record my set, go for it." All right. And I was I was very surprised about that because a lot of times comedians don't want their stuff recorded just because like um, they're, sometimes they're testing out material or whatever, or they just don't want to get out there on YouTube just so people are like see a, see the stuff they do just in case if they want to do the same joke at another, another night or something. But he was like, yeah, man, just, uh, if you want to record my stuff, go for it. And, uh, he was nice enough to actually let me choose any of the, uh, the jokes I wanted for the, uh, the show tonight. <laughs> and, uh, we got a clip we're going to show. And to be honest, it was tough to find one clean enough to show. <laughs> like, uh, <laughs> like this is dinking around. Like we we're uncensored here. We can say whatever shiz we want. Yeah. Um, but I still like to keep it a little bit safe. Yeah. Like PG 13 ish, right? Yeah, I'd say PG thirteen ish. Yeah. Um. So here's uh here's just one little clip that I thought would be funny to show everybody. <laughs> I'm from here. I don't know if you guys can tell this by the uh, conveniently rolled up sleeves, but I am a bit of a douchebag. <laughs> Not supposed to laugh that hard at that part of the joke, but apparently it resonates with everyone here tonight. Um, shows my words carefully there. I said a bit of a douchebag. I'm not a full-on douche. Like I don't own white Oakley sunglasses when I walk into a business. Instead of taking them off like a normal human being, I just flip them around in the back of my head like that's a cool look. I practice my golf swing with no golf club while I wait in line. I'm not a full-on douche. in the 
the house here tonight, apparently, so. See you guys at Sunglass Hut later on. <laughs> That's cool. Oh, man. Uh, so many so many hilarious moments and like man the crowd was loving it the crowd was on fire like they were yeah. just laughing like yeah matt matt had them cracking up the entire night it was man it was it was friggin awesome so self-deprecating humor is some of my most favorite humor because to me it, it's a sign oh, yeah. of it's a sign of self-confidence and if you guys have ever met matt 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 he is not a douchebag at all they're like not right. even close and so i think that's the funniest part is that when you know him he's that's not he's not a douchebag not even close to a douchebag at all right but like we were talking about with Dave Weinbach earlier, when he's on the pickleball court, though, it's a different story. <laughs> yeah, he's a hothead on that court, man. Yeah, yeah. Watch he like out. flicks that switch, and like you do not want to be near him if uh, if somebody calls a ball out when he thought it was in, or vice versa. <laughs> yep, very true. Uh, oh, that's man. cool. So we got a couple man. comments here. Uh, Leslie White, she said, "Hi guys. Hey Leslie. Leslie was actually the first person that I recognized when I walked into the place." Uh, for the uh, the Great Lakes Regionals, I I walked in and uh, I saw her, and she was wearing a medal that she won earlier that day, and it was very cool to to see her, and um, and she was nice to nice enough to uh, do a like a little mini interview with me for the the video I was I was putting together. So nice, uh, good to see you, Leslie. Thanks for watching. Our good buddy Jay Hall was also watching. He said, "Yo, nice." What's up, Gizmo? All right, dude, are you excited to meet Gizmo for the first time next week? Man? Oh, man, I cannot wait. Uh, Gizmo, uh, Scott Golden, uh, everybody. I mean, Kyle Yates, Tyson McGuffin, like everybody that's been on our show, I'll finally get to meet in person. Can't mm -hmm. wait. Nice. Or actually, I don't know. Scott Golden might not be there. I forget. I can't remember if he was going to be there or not. But I, I think today today he was moving down to Florida. I think today was the big move day yeah, for him. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, I think so. Scott might not be there, but pretty much everybody else that's been on our show, I think, is going to be there. And I cannot friggin' wait, man. Yeah, that's going to be pretty badass. Um, so real quick, back back to Matt's comedy show. So where was that at? It was called Dr. Grin's Comedy Club. And it was is, in is that at the building Bob? called at the Bob. Yep. Yeah, it was okay. in the Bob. I've been there a couple times. I I, I couldn't. I've. I remember being at the comedy club in the Bob. I couldn't remember the actual name of it. And that the sign didn't look familiar. I don't know if maybe they changed it, but I've been to that place a, a couple times. I don't know, maybe six, seven, eight years ago. Yeah. And that sign, it was actually inside the place. I don't even, I don't think the, at least the part that I went into of the building, I didn't even see a sign that said Dr. Grins outside. Okay. You had to go in and it was up on the third floor. So yep. a nice third floor comedy club. <laughs> was that your first time ever going to the Bob? It was. Yep. First yeah. time. It was nice. I like it. Yeah. It's cool. It's just, you know, it has all the different floors with all the different bars and restaurants and stuff. It's, it's a yeah. pretty cool concept. I, I bet you the locals in the Grand Rapids area. And if any of you guys are listening, give us your opinion. I bet you they hate that place. That's like, <laughs> they're probably like, that's the trendy place to go. That's where everybody comes when they're from out of town. That's where all the bachelor and bachelorette parties go. So they probably hate it, but I've always enjoyed it every time I've gone there. Yeah, I had a great time. Uh, there were, uh, there was the opening act and then Matt and then the headliner. All of them were hilarious. Such a, such a fun night. Nice. Um, so yeah, so that was day one that all that happened just in day one. That was all in weekend. one day, Webby. All in one day. Can you believe what? that? <laughs> what? That sounds like a jam-packed day. <laughs> so then uh, so then Sunday rolls around, and that's the day that this guy, me, that's the day that I play in the tournament. All right. Um, so there was one person that I didn't meet on Mixed Doubles Day that he was there. I just couldn't find him, and that is Mark Friedenberg, a.k.a. Yoda. Um, he's, he's one of the, one of the greats, one of the legends of the sport. He's in the hall of fame. Uh, he's been around for a long time. Uh, he even has a book. And on Sunday, uh, when I, when I got there, uh, I heard that he was still in the building somewhere. So that was my mission. Cause I got there, uh, probably about two hours before I was scheduled to play my matches. So I'm like, okay, my current mission is to find Yoda. Um, so <laughs> So I heard that he was still in the building. So I picked up his book because I, I heard that he was actually signing autographs at the vendor table. Um, so I snagged one of these bad boys. I paid for it. I didn't snag it as in like grab it and run and steal it or anything like that. So I got this. It's Winning Pickleball by Mark Friedenberg. And this thing is awesome, man. It's like a, it's like a textbook all about pickleball. 
Mm. It gives like a, a history of pickleball. Uh, it tells you tips on how to play pickleball better. Um, it's got a great section for for beginners to learn about pickleball, like the, the, the concept of it, the basics. Tells you all about the paddles, everything. Everything you want to know, it's probably in this book. Um, okay. It's, and like I said, it's like a textbook. I mean, there's like, it's just, it's amazing. It's got a glossary even. So many great what? things. Um, so I had the book. I was walking all around trying to find him. And then it happened. I found him. He was playing with his son, actually. And, uh, and there he is. There's the man himself, Mark Yoda Friedenberg. And uh, super nice guy. Um, and he was actually familiar with us. That was I was kind of surprised by that. I, I didn't know if he would even know who I was. I was total fanboy. I w- walked up with the with the book, and I was like, uh, "Can I have your <laughs> autograph, sir?" Hi, hi, Mister Yoda. Hi, Mister yeah. Yoda. Can I get a Can I get an autograph? <laughs> yeah, but he, uh, yeah, he. I mean, he knew. Like I, I told him that I'm I'm Webby from the Eddie and Webby show, and he's like, "Oh yeah, nice to meet you." And then like he was talking to me about how, uh, like he he knew about Steve Peranto being on our show. Mm-hmm. He actually spoke with Steve recently. And um, and I think he actually listened to the episode, and that was nice. very cool to hear. And uh, so he signed my book. And uh, if you want me to, I can I can read you what he wrote me here. Yeah. It says, "Webby, better than Eddie, you are. <laughs> Beat him, you will." Mm. <laughs> no, it actually doesn't doesn't say any of that. But I I had to I had to do it. <laughs> nice note of it. What did it say for real? <laughs> uh, but it, what it does say is, "To Webby." Hope this book makes you a pickleball champion, Mark Yoda Friedenberg. So that's very cool. This is one of my prized possessions right now, man. I love this thing. Nice. That was cool. I was yeah, to, I was total fanboy when I met him. Yeah. I'm not gonna lie. Um, it was, it was what, very what, cool though. Wasn't that song that we played or that Steve Peranto created Yoda based on the song Lola? Wasn't isn't that the Yoda he's singing about? Yep, exactly. Okay. And it was all, actually Weird Al Yankovic also did a parody of that Lola song called Yoda. Oh, really? So I don't know. I don't know if Steve was doing a parody of Lola or doing a parody of Weird Al's version of Yoda. I'm not sure. We'll have to, we'll have to ask him next time we talk to him. <laughs> we should do a parody of Steve's parody of Weird Al's parody of whoever yes. sang Lola. Yes. And it'll be, it'll be all about uh, my experience meeting Yoda. That'll, <laughs> that's what it'll be about. <laughs> I like it. Getting the autograph. That's awesome, man. That's cool. You met him. I met him at the Great Lakes Regionals. <laughs> he was sitting at a table and he signed my book. Yeah, that's all I got. <laughs> nice. Good job. Good job. Thanks. <laughs> that's awesome. Um, all right. So so you're there. You meet Yoda. And what what time? Because you, cause you played that day, but what time did your matches start? So it was scheduled to start at 4.30, so I had a very late start, yeah. um, which was actually good because I, uh, I, I was out a little bit late after because of um, Matt's show, um, enjoyed a few drinks, so I, wanted to, I needed to make sure I was uh, good to go and settled down, um, nice and rehydrated, uh, and then I wanted to make sure I got some good rest, so I slept in, and then uh, just, just relaxed for a while, and then once I was up and ready, I then went back to... Uh, back to the location of the tournament and I got there like at least two hours before I was scheduled to play and uh 4 30 rolls around and still our our group didn't get called to play yet and uh I looked at the I pulled up the bracket and of course um it's a bye for my team There's, uh, uh, we sit out first so the other the other teams uh all get to play and we sit out so um one cool I thing though that. is I got to yeah I, I I hate that too I hate that very much um, but I watched some great matches while I waited and, uh, Blair Kermines, the, uh, district USAPA ambassador for, uh, the area I live in, he, uh, he was playing and, uh, man, he was on fire. Like it was very cool to watch his matches. He, I think he had actually lost one of his early rounds. I think he won the first match, but then he lost the second one. So it knocked him into the opportunity bracket, but then man, he, he worked his way out of that opportunity bracket. Um, I watched him, um, they were, he was in the. What he was in the match where the losers win bronze. He won that match. So then he went on to uh, play against the uh, the people waiting for the gold medal match, and uh, he ended up beating his team. I think they they won the first game, lost the second game, and then they won the third game. But because they came from the opportunity bracket, mm-hmm. they then had to play another game another to fifteen. Game, yeah. And uh, 
and that they ended up winning that one and got gold. So it was very cool. I didn't get to see all of them because it was during the third match of their best two out of three when finally my team got called to play our match. Oh. And I think that this is probably a, probably a good hour after we were supposed to start. Yeah. Um, so uh, that's tough, which man. I didn't I mean, mind. I, yeah. 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 I mean, I, I didn't mind it because I was able to watch a lot of good pickleball, but I, I really do hate starting with a bye. I hate mm-hmm. the fact that the other teams were already loose. They had already played some games, uh, but we, uh, we just, we dealt with uh, what was presented to us. All right. So it's what, 530 ish now and, and you guys get called. Have you, had you had a chance to warm up at all, play at all? Uh, nope. We didn't warm up one bit. <laughs> okay. So we just, uh, we, the only warm up, the only warming up we did was before the match started. So we hit back and forth a bit. Um, one thing though, the location, it was, it was hot. It was very, very hot. It was 90 degrees outside and it felt every bit as warm as that inside. Um, so it was, uh, I was, I was drenched in sweat before the match even started. <laughs> You're drenched in so, sweat in like 74 degrees. So yeah, it, yeah, really seriously. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter the fact that it was hot. <laughs> if it was, if it would have been 60 degrees, I would have been drenched in sweat before the match. So that really means nothing, Okay, <laughs> but, but it, definitely a lot warmer than I expected it to be. But, um, yeah, so we start, start the match and, uh, it was a, it was a very good team that we played in the first round. They, uh, they were very tough in the first match. If I remember correctly, I think they took an early lead and then we took the lead back, but then they took the lead again. And then uh, I think at one point it was tied uh, seven, seven or something like that. And then we ended up uh, winning that one. We, we made some good plays. We won that match on to match two. Uh, we didn't do so good in the second match. They ended up beating us. It was like 11 to four. So definitely not as good as the first match. So it came down to uh, game three. And uh, it started off excellent for us. We started off six to zero. Mm. So I was feeling feeling very good. Um, but because it was game three, we switched sides after scoring six points. So we switched sides. And then all of a sudden, things went downhill for us. They They started scoring points like crazy. They tied it up. And then they took the lead. So I think at one point, they were beating us eight to seven. And, uh, man, it just kept going back and forth, side out, side out, side out. Um, but then finally things clicked for us and, uh, we were victorious 11 to nine. So oh, yeah. man, oh nice. man, it was a, it was a very, very brutal match. Um, by far the most intense match I've ever been a part of in a tournament setting. Um, you could just tell all of us were, uh, like fatigue was starting to set in. Cause we, like I, I was looking at the footage after I edited it out all of the timeouts and everything, there was 45 minutes of gameplay mm-hmm. that we had just in that one match. So it was uh, in the heat. It was uh, took, took a lot out of me. I'm not going to lie. It took a lot out of me, but it was, it was fun, man. Very, very fun back and forth match. And it was, they were a very tough team that we, fo- that we played against. Okay. Nice. So you're up. It, so it was a, was it round robin or was it like normal double elimination? Um, so it was round robin because there were actually there were only a few teams in the in the bracket. They they kept the brackets small on purpose for this one. Um, uh, it was, this was a nationals qualifier, and so they were keeping them on the smaller side to, um, to that way so people there'd be a better chance of people making it into the nationals like qualifying for nationals. Because um, I think if I'm not mistaken, you have to get gold to be able to pre-register for nationals. But I think everybody who plays in a national qualifier gets to register. Hmm. I'm not sure how it works. Okay. Does that sound right? Have you have you heard how that works? It's confusing. But this is also for 2020, right? Yeah, for 2020, okay. not for this year. Gotcha. For yeah, I I don't know how it works. I, I'm somebody explained it to me before, and then I was like, ah, whatever. I I I'm not going to get gold in a in a whatever. Yeah. So go ahead. So anyway, so we we go into the next team. Um, so there's there's only three teams in our bracket. So I mean, in our division. Um, so like my goal for this thing was like, I just don't want to like, it'll, it'll be cool to come home with a bronze medal, but I don't want to like, technically that's last place. So I don't, mm-hmm. I just don't want to come home with a bronze medal. So I just, I really want to do good against this other team and, and like guarantee that we get at least silver. So we play against the team or we start playing the other team and, uh, and we got our asses handed to us in the, mm-hmm. in the first game. It was, uh, the score was 11 to two, I believe. Okay. Um, Actually, it might have even been eleven to one, if I'm not mistaken. It was it was bad. We got beat very badly. They were a very tough team. 
Um, then we switch sides and we actually take an early lead. Things are feeling good. And then uh, they get a couple points and we, we went back and forth a little bit. Uh, but then they just, they just ran away with it and they ended up beating us 11 to four. Um, so we, we lost pretty badly against that team. They were, they were such a good team though. Like very good team. We had some great rallies though. Like we, we fought hard, <clears throat> definitely fought hard. Yeah. Uh, but it just, we just, we couldn't get it done. Um, I didn't know how the other team had done against that team. So I still wasn't sure like how we did. I mean, we, I knew we beat the other team. So I figured that was probably going to be in our favor, but I think it was probably all going to depend on how they did against that team. Well, cause uh, it's, turns, it, it was round Robin, right? So you just, it was each yeah. team. Okay. So then how is it? Is it like wins first and then score second? Is that how it works? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Wins first, score second. Yeah. Gotcha. So, um, so we get the results. They call the bronze medal team, and it ends up being the first team that we played, not yeah. us. All right. We're not bronze. Okay. So then they announce the silver medalists. And here we go. The silver medal goes to Webby and my buddy Ray. Yeah, nice. I love this metal too, man. It's it's very heavy duty. I love the way that it looks. Yeah, and, I like uh, that. It's solid. I might actually, uh, I think I'm going to wear it the rest of the show if you don't mind. You should, man. Wear that thing with pride, baby. And what makes me extra proud about it is this was, is this my first medal in the 3.5 division? I usually mm -hmm. play 3.0, but my partner is 3.5. So we did 3.5 3 and we did it. Got silver. Nice man. So you're you're the first one to get a between you and I the first one to get a doubles 3.5 medal. That's right. Yeah. Nice man. That's awesome. That's right. Yet you're the one that always wins the Eddie versus Webby championship <laughs> belt. I don't get it. I just don't get it. <laughs> yeah. It won't happen. It won't happen again though. So I just I really hope you're cherishing that time with that belt because it's uh the next match is going to be way different than the previous ones. Don't you uh don't you forget that. <laughs> you mean instead of winning by a good amount, I'm going to win by a big amount? Is that what you're saying? That's the difference? Oh, man. Don't you talk oh. like that. Nope. Ha. Nope. Mm. That's going to, it's, I, I can already, I can already see where it's going to get placed in my basement. So, okay. Well, good. We'll keep practicing. Um, all right, so so you guys you guys won, right? Don't we? Uh, I think we have a, a picture of you and your partner, right? I do believe so. Let's uh, let's yeah show the picture. There it is. So that's my buddy Ray, and uh, man, God bless him. He uh, he plays in the uh, with with the younger group. He's um, I want to say he, I think he's sixty five years old. So every this is the this is the second tournament he's played with me, and he's always got to play down to uh to my age bracket. But man, he keeps up with us very nicely. He's he's awesome. He's a great partner. Uh, we have great great chemistry together, and he lives near me too. So we actually get a chance to play frequently with each other. So that that definitely helps big time. I actually took a few days off work before the tournament, and every day I played for at least three hours. That every day that I was off work, I played for at least three hours. Uh, and two of those days, I was with Ray. And, uh, and yeah, we just, we have great chemistry. We play very well together. We, our first tournament together was the Wolverine tournament that we did in Celine a few months ago. And we played awesome. We didn't place, but like, I felt great about how we played and we beat some very tough teams. Okay. And I, like, I was, I was very happy with, with our performance. So I, I knew we had it in us and, uh, I knew it was going to be tough this time, but yeah, I'm I'm super happy about getting silver in this tournament. Like super, super happy. Nice, man. That's awesome. It sounds like it was a great experience. It sounds like you guys played well, came home with a medal. That's gotta be it's gotta feel good. Oh man, it feels amazing. Uh and Leslie White, she said Ray is so awesome. I agree. Couldn't agree agree with that more. Uh Leslie also says, When is the Eddie and Webby rematch? Hmm. I mean, I can bring the belt to Grand Rapids with me, but we're going to be pretty busy that weekend. So I don't know if we have a chance to. To Yeah. So like we were talking about this before. I, I kind of like the fact that we're not going to do Eddie versus Webby this time. I like I kind of want to just stick with us working as a team, yeah. focusing on team mentality, because I don't know if you want to talk about this now. We've got a huge match next Thursday, as a matter of fact. <laughs> I, I think I huge. Think should, I think we should wait because it is pretty, pretty, oh, man. pretty big. Yeah, pretty guys, big. I'm telling you, you're you're gonna want to stay tuned for the announcement of this match that we have coming up on oh, Thursday. Yeah. Like, I <laughs> I can't believe it's actually happening. 
it's a dream match that I never thought would actually happen. It's happening. And yes. uh, yeah, that's all I'm going to say about it right now. But we will reveal later on in the show yes. what that match is going to be. <laughs> nice. Oh, it looks like Nicole Miller responded to our question about how do locals in Grand Rapids feel about the Bob. And she said, I don't think people hate it, but it might not be their first choice for drinks and food. Dr. Grin's Comedy Club is awesome, though. All right. So it sounds like for a comedy show, locals like to go there, but they probably only go there for food and drinks when maybe they have visitors in town. So, all right. Cool. All right. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Leslie has another comment. She said the idea, the idea versus Webby match needs to be at the Wolverine facility. Oh well, man, that would be epic. Well, why don't we do this? So, you know, I'm, I'm sure I'll be traveling up to Detroit for work sometime in the fall. Maybe we can see about getting something going then after work, or maybe I can come in on a Sunday or something like that. We could try it out. Yeah, I'm sure we could figure something out. Now, I'm not okay. sure if the uh, if the Wolverine facility will be ready in the fall or not. Um, I've it's it's like a brand new thing that's still in the works. Okay, um, Leslie, here and, yeah. you, you have the opportunity to have Eddie and Webby come play the Eddie versus Webby match. So, what can we do to to speed things up here, huh? <laughs> yeah. So, Leslie, just tell the people <laughs> if anybody's giving you any trouble with getting this facility up and running soon, just tell them that we want to have a match there and that's all they need to hear. That's really all they need to hear. And it'll probably be built by the end of next week. Yep. That's all you got to tell them. <laughs> that's all you got to tell them. All right. Well, whenever that's ready, I think it'd be fun to definitely go and uh, play at that facility for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so what about you, Eddie? What have you been up to lately? Man, um, some awesome stuff. I'm sure I mentioned it before that, I was up in Grand Rapids for a couple of weeks um, for a couple of different things that we talked about. We, we Actually, our last podcast with Steve Peranto, I did live from the place in Grand Rapids that we were renting for those couple of weeks. But anyway, one of the things I did there was I participated in the Meyer State Games of Michigan. That was, what, two weekends ago? Two weeks? Three weeks? I don't remember. My days are all mixed up. Right? My weeks are all mixed up. Anyway. Um, I had a blast, man. Super fun. Uh, I played mixed doubles and men's doubles. Uh, and actually I got to play mixed doubles with Nicole Miller, who she's the one that just commented. She, she's been on our channel in a bunch of different videos. She was in Eddie versus Webby 2.0, Eddie versus Webby 2.5. She played mixed doubles with you at the Michigan indoor, uh, tournament back in, in March, right? Yep. Yeah. Um, Nicole's awesome. Yeah. Super awesome. So much fun to play with. I know you're listening, Nicole. Honestly, I thoroughly enjoy playing with you. I think it's a lot of fun. And I think we played pretty well together. Uh, and and we did pretty good. We played 3.5. And, uh, you know, we, we had a good time. Um, I, I had a video that uh, posted about it, like a vlog style video that I posted a couple weeks ago about our experience. So if you guys want to see how we did, go and check that out. But Definitely had fun and uh, definitely played pretty well, which was cool. Now, there's one thing I want to talk about, and that is the fact that a lot of the uh, the Grand Rapids people that play pickleball and the planning committee for the Beer City Open think that it's my fault that they keep having to move <laughs> some of their tournaments indoors. And I just want to set the record straight. Although the three times that I've supposed to play at Belknap Park between last summer's Beer City Open and the Meyer State Games of Michigan, although all three times we had to move indoors to Grand Rapids Racket and Fitness, I still don't think it's my fault. So I will tell you this, though. I want great weather for this year's upcoming Beer City Open. So as far as Mother Nature is concerned, I'm going to withdraw from the tournament. I'm not going to play in it. Webby and I are not going to play. Okay. So as far as she is concerned, I'm not playing. And that way the weather is, is going to be good. What do you, th what do you think about that Webby? Yeah. And that's, that was actually our big announcement. The fact that we are, we are pulling out of the beer city open. We're not, we're not competing together. Um, that's our big announcement. No, I'm just kidding. Totally kidding. Totally yeah. kidding. Unless mother, unless mother nature is watching, then we are, we, I am withdrawing. I'm not going to play. 
because <laughs> um, we really want good weather. But I do think it is funny that the three times I'm supposed to play at Belknap Park, it gets moved indoors. Now, I have to say, though, if we are going to get moved indoors, there's not many better places to play indoors than Grand Rapids Racket and Fitness because I do love that facility. Yeah. It's it's great. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, great indoor facility. Um, now, do you think I would be hexing anything if I read the weather forecast? I know it's way too early for this to even be accurate, but do you want to hear what the weather forecast currently is yeah, for the sure, Bear City Open weekend? Why not? For Thursday, July 11th, a high of 83, low of 65. That's not bad. Mm -hmm. I can deal with that. Um, chance of scattered thunderstorms, 40%. So that's not bad. 40%, yeah. I feel like that, that could go either way. That could go yeah. either way. That's not a guarantee. So yep. even if that forecast was for tomorrow, I wouldn't worry too much. Okay. Friday, July 12th, high of 82, low of 63, even better temperature. I like that it's a degree cooler. Okay. Um, mostly cloudy and chance of rain, 30%. So that's better. That's improvement. Not too bad. Uh, Saturday, July 13th, high of 82, low of 64, even better. And uh, partly sunny, 20% chance of rain. So to be honest, that's that's not too bad. That That's not too bad. I don't feel like mm -hmm. that's enough of a threat to cause concern. That could easily clear up by then. Like all the day, of course, all the days before that look absolutely perfect. Um, no rain, but uh, hot though, like upper 80s. But no, nah, I'd like if that if that were the forecast, if it was happening in a couple of days and that was the forecast, I wouldn't be too worried. Here's the thing too, is that it's Michigan. Like your weather is your weather forecast is accurate, like up to a 10 minute window, and that's about it. Yeah, exactly. You know, yeah, you so can, I, you, you yeah. can't. You can't. You cannot rely on the weather forecast. We'll just see what happens. Nope. Um, but yeah, if if it does rain, if we get moved indoors, then this this will be the last time Eddie is allowed yep. to compete in a Grand Rapids tournament. Yep, last time. <laughs> um, well, anyway, before I continue on that, I'm now moving to my Henry's. As I mentioned before, this has nice. le this has less calories, no added sugar, uh, and this is blueberry lemon flavor, which I'm oh, excited geez. about. Oh, you blew it again. <laughs> this one's even worse. So I've got something to admit. Yeah. I don't even know if I want to admit this, to be honest. Um, so the, it, the dude, it was just I, one time. It was just one time. Like it was in college. <laughs> you can tell everybody there's, there's nothing, nothing to worry about. So like I, this, this show, we, we only, it was like 24 hours ago that we just decided we were even going to do a podcast today. So we didn't have much, <laughs> yeah. we had no prep time for this show at all, which uh, I mean, it's, I'm sure it's kind of obvious the fact that we, what we're what we're talking about, and we're just not, not nothing's planned out, but who who cares? Anyways, um, so I wanted I wanted to get a Perrin beer because it's uh, the Beer City opens next week, and Perrin is the sponsor, so I thought it'd be cool to drink Perrin. So I went to my local craft beer store, and for some reason they're like sold out of all of their Perrin stuff, <laughs> but but I found like way in the back of one of their shelves a few cans of ninety eight problems, and uh, let's play a little game here. How old? Do you think this beer is when when do you think this beer was canned <laughs> man so i mean ipas typically you probably want to drink those within i don't know six months i would say would be max shelf life so my right. guess is older than that yes it is older than that it, is it less than a year <laughs> no are you serious <laughs> Um, I'll give you one guess and then I'll give you the precise date. All right. Uh, 16 months ago. Uh, give me like a date in a year. All right. So that would be, um, well, geez, you're asking me for the year. Like a month, a month, a month, and month. A month okay. And I'm going to say, I'm going to say like March, 2018. <laughs> I wish <laughs> July 24th, 2017. <laughs> <laughs> But to be honest, it still tastes good. I'm not going to wow. lie. It still tastes good. But uh, yeah, this the only reason I bought it was because like I really wanted to drink a pair of yeah. beer on this episode. And uh, like <laughs> it, it was uh, I found it. They probably didn't even know they even had this on the shelf still. Like I just I found it like way in the back. I don't even know. Um, well, it's it's probably because yeah, they sell it, it, it's because they they sell so much parent that it goes so quick. Yeah. And this yeah, this one probably got stuck way in the back corner. <laughs> yeah, well, because yeah, because they funny. they always have parent, and yeah. but this time it, like they were the there was no parent left, yeah. and because uh, I, I love parent beer, it sells great around these parts. Nice, but um, 
Yeah, so surprisingly, it doesn't taste that bad. I was expecting like it, like even the even the best the world's best IPA after two years. I don't yeah. expect much from it, but uh, it's very drinkable for a nice. two year shelfed IPA. Okay. Well, good. Well, I got to tell you, I'm enjoying this Henry's more than I am the Truly. I feel like the Henry's is it oh, really? like the the yeah the Truly has almost like a like you could tell it's fake like fake flavoring. Uh, this, this tastes more, a little bit more natural. It drinks more like just a regular sparkling water with just a little kick to it. I'm really enjoying it. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I, f- I found that with some of the, the flavored beers as well. Like sometimes you can just tell that it, they used artificial flavoring rather mm-hmm. than natural ingredients it makes a huge difference. Well, I mean, it does say natural flavors, huge. but you know, you know what one of the most common natural flavors is used to give you like a vanilla E kind of flavor. Uh, vanilla. No, a, a natural flavor that's not vanilla because they, they'd have to list vanilla on here, I believe. That's just oh, okay. Uh, you, you take um, a guess what it is. My, uh, my guess is vanilla. Nope. <laughs> beaver butt. No, I don't know. <laughs> be, be, beaver butt. Be, 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 beaver butt. I'm not kidding you guys. If, 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 you're, if your label says natural ingredients, and you can look this up on, on the Google, uh, www.thegoogle.com. Uh, beaver butt is used in uh, a lot of foods and beverages, and it gives like a vanilla y kind of flavor. So if it says natural flavors on your ingredients, you're drinking or eating beaver butt. I want to test out your theory. Hold on one second. Okay. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, I don't know what's happening. I'm nervous. Hey, Anytime Webby gets out of the chair. Volume 10. You, what? Okay. What's Hey Google, what is beaver butt? On the website foxnews.com, they say a chemical compound used in vanilla flavored foods and scents comes from the butt of a beaver. The what? Sorum comes from a beaver's castor sacs located between the <laughs> pelvis and base of the tail. Comes from the castor sacs. Right? Interesting. Beaver I butt. Not, I, I did not know that. Yeah. So, anyway, uh, no beaver butt. This is a beaver butt free <laughs> beverage. So I'm liking Henry's. So uh, nice. I, I think Henry's is at the top of my list. Maybe next time I'll, I'll get a white claw and compare it against that. Like I feel like every episode I'll I'll see which one goes better. And I'm really looking forward to trying out Perrin's sparkling uh, or um, spiked seltzer next weekend as well. Looking forward to that for sure. Nice. You yep. want to know something I tried recently that I actually su- like surprisingly liked a lot. What's that? Uh, both Founders and Lagunitas make a an alcohol-free IPA, a mm. non-alcoholic IPA, and to be honest, they, they tasted pretty damn good. Really? Why? Why would? Why? Well, I have so many questions. Why would you do that? <laughs> right? Yeah, that's 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 a great question. Yeah. I don't have a good answer for why, <laughs> but if you find yourself like. <laughs> Wanting to drink a non-alcoholic IPA, they, they make good ones out there. I mean, I don't know why you would want to do that, but, but, but it, there's it, good it, options. <laughs> it'd be like it'd be like uh, the first person that um, discovered m- milk, like cow milk. They'd be like, "Do you know what's great? When you when you you pull in the udder of a cow and and then you you pasteurize it and you drink it. It's amazing." And everybody's like, "Cool, but why? Like, how would you know that? Right. Like, what what would have led to you knowing that?" So. Right. It's the same question for you. How would you know that? What like Right. What was the motivation? Yeah. That is a great question. I never thought about that. Like why did somebody decide to milk a cow? <laughs> right. <laughs> why, why do they do that? We're supposed to, this is like a pickleball podcast and we're talking about <laughs> milking cows. Now, this is thinking around with Eddie and Webby. We do That's whatever right. the hell we want. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. So two, you had two different non-alcoholic IPAs for some weird reason and <laughs> and they're good? Yeah. Surprisingly refreshing. So the Lagunitas one, it actually doesn't say non-alcoholic IPA. It just says it's called Hop. I think it's just called Lagunitas Hop, and it's hop flavored water. It's oh, okay. a hop, hop flavored water beverage. All right. And I gotta like I gotta tell you, like man, it like it was it was refreshing. Had that just like a little hint of hoppiness. Like I I bought it. It was only five dollars for a four pack, 
So I'm like, I'm going to buy this. It's probably going to taste like pure shit. I'm going to dump it after one bottle. I, I enjoyed it. Like I, okay. like I, I mean, I don't really have a good reason to buy it frequently, but like <laughs> if I ever did see some and I was thirsty, I would drink it for sure. Okay. All right. Well, <laughs> if I see it, maybe I'll buy. Didn't I see a sign for like Labatt Blue IPA or something like that when I was in Detroit? Like a big billboard on 94. Have you seen that? Um, I don't think I've seen the Labatt, but I have seen who makes the uh, uh man the uh, no uh Blue Moon Blue Moon who makes Blue oh, Moon Blue Moon does <laughs> yeah so I, Blue Moon makes an IPA I have that at Tiger Stadium okay <laughs> <laughs> nobody we're losing viewers like crazy nobody cares what the hell and we're talking about everybody's right now. gone all right let's get back to pickleball <laughs> um yeah. so. Back to the Meyer State Games in Michigan. We talked about how Nicole and I played, had a great time, put a vlog video out. Definitely check it out on the channel. It's it's a lot of fun. We had a great time. Had some really cool competitors too. Uh, now, it's Sunday morning, right? And mm. to make a long story short, a few days prior to the tournament, uh, somebody reached out to me and said, hey, somebody's looking for a partner. And, uh, and they're like, do you want to play? I'm like, yeah, sure. You know, I'll, I'll play men's doubles. It'll be fine. And I've, it, you know, they say, well, they only want to play 4-0. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm trying to get to 4-0. I'm not there yet. Uh, but why not? As, as long as they're comfortable with me not being a 4-0 player and they're good with it, why not? Let's give it a try. I think it, it'd be a really fun experience. Uh, and it turns out that, the guy that was looking for the 4-0 player was our good buddy, Anthony, who uh, <laughs> he's been on the channel before. Him and I won uh, silver back in December at the um, South Florida Slam over in Plantation. Uh, yeah, you know, we've, we've become good friends with him. He, he's been at a bunch of tournaments. We've seen him. So you, you played with his brother, Eddie, at that tournament. Yeah. And um, was that an IP? Uh, Ypsilanti or where was that? Flat Rock? Uh, it, was actually in, uh, it was actually in Ohio, Oregon, oh, Ohio. Okay. Yeah, so so it, it turns out that yeah, okay, um, it, it's Anthony. I'm like, yeah, of course. I right. mean, it, Anthony and I play together pretty often. He he knows my skill set. I know his skill set. I know that we we play well together on the court. If if I'm if I'm gonna try out 4.0 for the first time, definitely somebody like him. Yeah, exactly who I want to play with. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, um, and I gotta tell you, it, it, playing up was was very different for me because it was almost like I had very little expectations, right? Because if I went yeah. in to 4.0 like think about last summer at the beer city open the, we didn't even score a point the first two matches right and so it's yeah. like all right well if, if if i score a few points like okay i i think i'm gonna feel good but hey who knows maybe we can show up and maybe you know anthony and i are, are jiving well and we're in the flow and we can get there uh and and so it was almost like it was almost so nice to have no expectations at all because you're playing up, right? And Ben Johns talked about it in the podcast. It's like, hey, if you want to relieve some of that anxiety, play up because then it's like there's really no expectations and you can just play your heart yeah. out and see what happens. Yeah. Uh, that's like I, that's why I think I think next year, let's just go for the pro. Let's go pro level. <laughs> can we do that? Or <laughs> yeah, let's just go. We just go, let's just go right just, to five oh. Yeah, let's just let's just do it. Screw it, man. Screw yeah. screw three point five and four point oh and four point five. Right. Let's just go let's right just to five point oh. Let's go right to five oh. <laughs> um no, honestly, it was cool. And uh, one thing that I think I was the most happy about was the fact that we held our own. We we did go two and out, but I got to tell you, man, some of the games were very close, and uh, we definitely held our own. Uh, and that that to me was was one of the greatest turnouts of it. Where it's like, yeah, okay, I can hold my own at four zero. It's going to be very tough to be able to win a lot of these games, but. You know, I can hold my own. I can compete, and that that's what was great about it. And I had a blast. Anthony and I had a ton of fun. As you can tell, I, we, we, I did a vlog video about it, uh, posted it just a couple days ago. You guys can check it out. Uh, we had a blast, and we had a good time. And I think we actually played very well. We had some great rallies going. One of the things I loved about 4.0 is it's a little bit more of a consistent level of play. So it's longer dink rallies. It's not so erratic. You kind of know what your what your opponents are going to be doing to you 70% of the time. And, and then the 30% is when they're taking advantage of your screw-ups, like popping the ball up or something like that. So it was a very good experience. Another thing I loved about it, Webby, is that the things that I need to work on became very obvious very quickly <laughs> in that in that tournament. Um, and And so... 
we've been doing this segment on the podcast lately um, called, you know, Pickle Tips. I don't even know what are we calling it. Um, we still haven't even come up with a name for it, but where we give you tips and we're working with my buddy Tony over at Into Pickle. He's doing Project 4.0. He's using me as a, a test subject for it where he's trying to get me to become a Benchmark 4.0 player. He used some of the footage from the first match uh, to kind of give some tips. Now, just for fair warning, I'm going to be stopping this video halfway through because the second half of the video, he's going to be talking about another another topic that we're going to be talking about in a little bit. But I'm just going to go ahead and play that video. All hey, right. guys. It's Eddie, and I'm back with my good buddy Tony here at Into Pickle. First of all, I want to start by telling you I'm so grateful for the opportunity for you to actually take a look at my videos and uh, and really start to give me a lot of tips that I'm immediately able to put into practice. So thank you for that, man. Uh, it's my pleasure, Eddie. Uh, and I likewise, uh, you know, I said it in the video, but I, uh, I'll say it here. I appreciate uh, you giving of yourself because really it's, I mean, you're putting yourself out there, uh, not just for yourself to get better, but also for others to get better by being able to watch your videos and see uh, where the good and what needs to be improved actually in terms of your game. And uh, so, you know, appreciate what you're doing. Of course. And that really is the goal, guys, for us to be able to give you tips that not only can help me specifically, but maybe can help you uh, learn some things as well. Why don't we jump into the most recent video that you watched? I think the first thing that you commented on was maybe some opportunities that I have with my weight transfer. Absolutely. Well, before we get into that, I mean, I, 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 again, I noted it in the video, but I want to make note of it again, which is the fact that you are really taking this seriously. I mean, you know, the last video that we did, we pointed out really a couple of things you needed to work on. And in the new, the, the new footage you sent us, those, those problems are pretty much gone. Great job. Uh, so excellent work on that. Um, there is one area, though, that, that you could still work on some more, which is the weight transfer. And what we're talking about there is just keeping the weight engaged in the stroke. If you find yourself pulling your weight away from the shot, uh, it makes the shot very difficult. And, and in the video, we saw a couple instances uh, where uh, you were kind of moving forward, uh, maybe prematurely and then having to move back, and then that takes your, your weight away from the shot, uh, resulting in the ball either going high or sometimes uh, you don't have enough uh, energy in the ball uh, to, to get past the net, so you end up in the net. So One thing I do want to mention is if you guys want to know some areas that need to work on, play up. This is my first time playing 4-0, and now you're up against opponents who are going to prey on your weaknesses. Yeah, if you think about it, I mean, the, the, the higher up you play, the harder the balls that you're getting, not just in terms of pace, but also placement. If you err by a little bit, you float the ball a little bit, a higher level player is going to pounce on that ball. Well, yeah, definitely appreciate that. It's one thing that I'm going to be much more mindful of. And to me, that comes down to just making sure that I'm in the right position on the court to where I'm not in a bind and unable to transfer my weight. Outside of that, is there anything else that you can kind of recommend to help me when working on making sure that I'm properly transferring my weight into the shot? It's basically similar to what we did when we talked about the leg, keeping the leg down. Focus on your non-dominant shoulder, so in your case, your left shoulder. Keeping that shoulder, again, not down, so you don't want to be like out of balance down, but you want to keep it engaged. So you want to keep it like the fighter stance. I think we talked about that last time, so kind of fighter stance. The other way, some people have a hard time with the shoulder concept. The other way you can think about it is with your head. So if you look at like Dave Weinbach, when he hits a third shot, it's almost, it's, it looks almost exaggerated because he'll, he'll put his head down he hits the third shot, and then you're like, "Are you going to look up?" And then he looks up. So you can use a similar concept for weight. You got to make you, if you make sure that your either your upper body, which the non-dominant shoulder helps, or your head, are in the shot. So they're forward and in the shot. Then your weight will be in a good position. The other thing that you kind of brought up to me, and you refer to it as moving with the point. Can you talk a little bit more about that? You know, you can think of a pickleball point like a. It sort of has a rhythm to it, right? Like a, almost like a dance, right? So, you know, the ball will go to the left and then, you know, you move with the ball and then the ball goes to the right, you move with the ball, the ball goes to the middle, you kind of adjust for that. So it, it's kind of like dancing a dance. And it's really important to recognize what's the next step in the dance uh, that you're dancing, right? So what happens sometimes is, and it's, it's a very common problem. I've done it. I think I did, I did a video on that of myself showing uh, and again we can link to that video where basically i'm playing against uh, tom and tyson some friends of mine uh and uh i hit a ret i hit my third shot i believe it was the third shot diagonal but i came in straight and so what happened is when the shot's diagonal i'm coming in straight it opens up this area and what tom did he just attacked the open area right which is what he should do basically follow the action where the action is going to be that's uh, super important in, in terms of advancing in the sport yeah, I noticed that there were a lot of times in the video where if I watch where my partner Anthony was going, 
uh, it would have given me a lot more confidence that he had the side to my left or right covered to where I could definitely then go and, and be in front of the ball where the anticipated return shot was going to be. No matter how you stand on pickleball court, there's going to be an open spot, right? So if you come over to the, let's say the ball gets, to the, gets it to the right, you shift to the right. Anthony would also shift to the right some. Well, that would open up a small area on Anthony's left, potentially, right, for a, for a diagonal attack. The, the, but the reality is that attack is really hard to execute. And so you're opening up a part of the court that's very hard to beat you on. So what you're trying to do is take away the big parts of the court. Uh, think of the middle, right? You never want to get beat down the middle, right? So you want to keep that middle closed. So the down the line shot will be the next biggest angle. And then the smallest angle left on the court will be the, the cross court, the, the little kind of pie slice left there. So if you got to leave a, a, a spot, which you will, then you want to leave that little tiny spot. You don't want to leave the middle and you don't want to leave the, the line. The middle first, line second, pie third. Well, we definitely appreciate that. Uh, there's one other piece. That's it. That's where we're going to stop that video for now. But we're going to be bringing it up a little bit later, and you'll see why. Nice. Yeah, that was great stuff. And I, I hope you uh, take his advice because uh, in case you forgot, I'm a, I'm a 3.5 silver medalist now, so I need you to be on your game next week. <laughs> All right. As long, as long as you're willing to carry me, that's fine. <laughs> No, but seriously, like the when I watched what you posted of you and Anthony playing, there were some excellent rallies in there, man. That was very fun to watch. Yeah, it's funny. Like I, I you know, I, I watch myself play, and I feel like I feel like I'm just as critical of myself now as I was a year ago. But then when you compare my videos from now to a year ago, you're like, oh my god, it's cringy almost. Like I, I, I watched last summer's Beer City Open video. And it was like, I kept looping my paddle and like, I didn't know how to dink at all. And I kept just lobbing the ball up, letting the other team just attack it like crazy. And now that, you know, that, that happens, but it's, it's very, very rare. So it's, it's, it's fun to, it's fun to, you know, to see the growth that both of us are going through. I'm loving it. Oh, for sure. And yeah, same thing here. Like when I watched the, the older footage from last year of us playing, especially myself. Yeah. Very, very cringeworthy. It's, it's horrible. It's God awful. Um, but to be honest, like even now, like my recent footage, like I, I reviewed some of the footage from, from when Ray and I played and there were some rallies where like in the moment, like after we got the point, I was like, Oh man, this is good stuff here. Like I'm, I am on point. I am on my game. This is excellent. And then I go back and watch it and it's like, ah, oh, man, that, that really, that didn't look that good. Actually. <laughs> like we're kind of lucky we got that point. I, <laughs> yeah. I popped it up. I set them up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the thing. It's, you know, it's always good to go back. That's one thing I love about us getting video of our matches is we can go back, we can look at it, we can critically look at it, identify areas we need to work on, and then go, you know, start practicing. And it's not even like, it's not even like, oh, I need to work on this one particular thing. And then you're focusing on it so much during your rec play or when you're drilling. It's almost like in the back of your mind, you're like, hey, I got to remember to do A, B, and C. And you just kind of work on it and slowly it doesn't become an issue anymore. Yeah, for sure. Um, but yeah, like, like I can't express how valuable it is to to record. Like, just set up a tripod or something, or like even one of those little mini tripods with the phone on it. Just set something yep. up to record yourself playing, and you will you will learn so much about what you have to work on by watching yourself play. Like, it's it's crazy. Yes. Well, I think that's it uh, about the Myers State games in Michigan and my experience in Grand Rapids. Uh, it was just ultimately a great time. Once again, big shout out to the whole Grand Rapids pickleball crew. You guys are awesome. You were very inviting of me to come play at Belknap Park to the week leading up to the tournament. Uh, just, man, you guys are awesome. Thank you. We, we, I, I, every time I come, I feel like I'm part of the family. And uh, we, oh, I, sure. I appreciate it, right? I mean, it's, it's awesome. For sure. Yeah. I, yeah. I love the Grand Rapids crew. Um, they always welcome us, welcome us with open arms. Um, and everybody that was part of the, uh, the Great Lakes regional tournament that I did in Kalamazoo. I mean, man, that was a top notch, uh, like such a, a high quality tournament experience. Uh, I definitely plan on going back next year. That was amazing. So anybody that's listening, if you get a chance, if you've ever considered it, Definitely try to get into that because um, you get to play with some awesome people, great talent, uh, and you might even run into some pros. Nice. 
Yeah, it's great. Love it. Uh, so what do we want to talk about next, Webby? Oh, man. Um, I actually have something fun I want to bring up. It's, just, it's really quick. Okay. I was on Instagram about a week or two ago, and I am a big fan of Tom Green. Uh, Tom Green, uh, we, we follow him on the Instagram. He went live as Are you he does about from the, time to time. Real quick, Tom Green, the, the Mormon who got arrested uh, in Utah many years yeah, ago? Yes, so I'm a huge fan. Huge fan of him. No, okay. not, not that Tom Green. Uh, uh, Tom okay. Green from the Tom Green Show on MTV. Okay. Also from Freddy Got Fingered and Road Trip. Mm-hmm. And also um, Celebrity Apprentice. Mm-hmm. A lot of people might know him from Celebrity Apprentice. Mm-hmm. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Tom Green. Uh, I've always been a big fan of his. I follow him on Instagram. And uh, he went live on Instagram about a week or two ago. And he, just, uh, he was just a- answering questions people had for him. So I tuned in and I asked him a question about pickleball and he actually responded to it. And I think we have a video clip of that. And if you have it, I'd say play it. Others that I also love. Uh, Who else? Do you prefer a full goatee or a full beard? Well, take a guess. All right. Um, Okay. Have I ever played pickleball? No, I do, I do not know what that is. Um, hmm. let's see what else. Uh, hmm. Oh, not a great response, Tom. Not a great response at all. Do you want to know why? He, I know he's lying. Do you want to know why? Why? Because he came to Naples a month ago, and I went to see him, and I sent him an Instagram DM asking him if he wanted to get some exercise and play some pickleball. And he never responded, but my assumption is that he read it. So the fact that he's saying he doesn't know what it is, I think he's lying. I think he's a, I think he's a wow. flat out liar. Yeah. I mean, if, if anybody gets a message, a direct message from Eddie and Webby, they obviously read it. So right. he definitely read it. Wow. Tom Green yeah. is a liar. He's a big fat liar. He's a liar. <laughs> But uh, but seriously, Tom, if you're watching, and I'm sure you are, like seriously, just uh, give us a call. We'll teach you. We'll show you the ropes of pickleball, and uh, that's currently at the top of my list of things to do in the pickleball world. Uh, as USAPA ambassador, even um, I need to uh, teach Tom Green how to play pickleball. And uh, so, Tom, just just give us a shout, and give us a ring. And, uh, and we'll show you the ropes. We'll give you some training and uh, we'll get you into some tournaments. Yes. That was fun. Glad, uh, glad you did that. One step closer to getting more celebrities playing some pickleball. That's right. And, and to be honest, like high school me would be high-fiving my current self so hard right now if, if, if he knew that, uh, that I gave a message to Tom Green on Instagram and he responded to it. Even though high school me wouldn't know what Instagram is because it didn't exist yet, but I'm sure yeah. he still would have high-fived me. <laughs> Isn't it like, I remember when we, like we used to get on the radio and we thought it was like the, the coolest thing ever, right? Like you call in a 95, five and you're like, <laughs> yeah. yes, I'm on the radio. This is the, like yeah. thousands of people heard me and you're like, yeah, this is the greatest thing ever. Yeah. Oh man. They just said that this song is going out to Webby. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. I'm famous now. <laughs> Oh, no great. joke. I have somewhere in my basement, there is a cassette tape of all the times that I called into radio stations when I was in junior high and high school. <laughs> oh, you got to find that. We need yeah. to make that public. I that do. needs to become public. I do domain. need to find it. <laughs> I still have the, the oh, clip man. of the time you called in to 95.5 and you, you were mad at, oh God, what's that guy's name? Because we, we said that we used to dress up like Star Wars characters and- Gnarls Barkley. Gnarls Barkley. That's right. Was that CeeLo Green? I actually Isn't found that. Really that. Who he is? Did you? Yeah, yeah. yeah CeeLo Green. He uh, was part of Gnarls Barkley. But uh, oh man, I should find that for an upcoming episode because I, I, yeah, I recently found it. So I bet I could find it easily. Yeah, I got to play that. That was I funny. Don't, I, I don't know how I feel about us bringing up our old, <laughs> our old, like high school, early twenties stuff onto the podcast because we we have a lot of we got a lot of dirt on each other. It's it's kind of nice because yeah, like that, we is both, true. that is we, true. We both have like equal. <laughs> Equal leverage on each other to where we're both nervous yeah. to put anything out there. Yeah. 
Let's say, yeah, we've we've matured quite a bit yeah, over the mature. years, that's for sure. <laughs> no, that's that's bullshit. <laughs> we haven't, but Yeah, we have not matured. If anything, yeah. we've gotten even less mature, but yeah. whatever. All right, well, why don't we get to what everybody everybody tuning in, the thousands of people out there probably want to hear about. What do you say? Let's do it. Let's should drop we, the bomb. Sh- should we just start by playing the clip from last year at this event? Yeah, let's do it. I say, why not? All right, give me time to take a piss. Okay. Well, I'm just going to go ahead (laughs) and play it. What up? What up? Pickleball tournament weekend. Let's do this. Jolly. Cheers. 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 It's not really at the water, but it's very close to the water. Cheers. So this concludes our Thursday night here in Grand Rapids, leading up to the pickleball tournament. All right, we're all registered. We got our gear. We're all set for tomorrow. At this time tomorrow, we should be wearing these medals. We will be. There it is. Wow, what a game. All right, time for a little warming up action. A lot of great talent here. It's been a lot of fun to watch. We got to practice a little bit, dink around, uh, but we don't want to push it too hard because tomorrow morning is when we play. We're excited. Can't wait. I'm prepared for the extreme heat, but we actually just got emailed about five minutes ago that it got moved indoors because it's going to rain today. So yep. We're actually going to be playing here today, the Grand Rapids Racket and Fitness Club. We've only played together twice ever. He's never played indoors, so this yeah. will be his first time playing indoors ever. I mean, it's the, the perfect yeah. recipe for tournament action. We're guaranteed to win now, for sure. And the home of the of the tournament we're about to start our first one of the 3.5 19 and above division yep let's do it let's do it Yeah, the score really doesn't matter in tournament play. So. It's about how much fun you're having. Right. And we had a lot of fun. Yeah. When it comes to the fun factor, yeah. I would say we scored 11 out of 11. When when hitting it into the net is fun, we had a ton of fun. Yes. <laughs> yes. If, when, you, if you don't score any points during a game and you think that's fun, then we aced the, we aced the fun factor yeah, of we, that game. We crushed it for sure. <laughs> so game one we lost, which means right. we now go into the loser's bracket, so we have yeah. one more chance to defend ourselves. We play a game. First to 15 points wins and then goes up to the next level. So it's uh, it's do or die for us now. We're right where we want to be. Yeah, let's do it up. Let's do it.
All right, we just finished our last game of the tournament, yep. and uh, check it out. What? This is what we did not win because yes. we uh, got eliminated. Yes. Uh, so we're done. We're done. We're done with the tournament. Done with the tournament. It was an uh, awesome experience, though. It was a great time. I'm glad we did it. These will be around our neck one day. Yes. But today is not that day. Soon enough. Well, that was the 2018 Beer City Open, which was last July. And you know what I just realized? What? A week from tomorrow, we will be back in Grand Rapids together for the 2019 Beer City Open. That's right, folks. The 2019 Beer City Open. Very excited for it. Uh, seriously, like, <laughs> last year was awesome, and we experienced this much of it. This year, with all of the friendships we've made, all of the connections we've made, the fact that we're going to be able to do live coverage of the event, it's going to be an absolute freaking blast. And I, I, I can't even, I don't even know where to begin. Like, it, oh, it just, man. the excitement level is beyond, beyond the roof right now. Yeah, like, I seriously, I feel like I'm not going to be able to sleep for the next week straight because of the the excitement i feel like i already feel like a, a kid the night before christmas like to me this is this is it this is the super bowl this is mm -hmm. the moment like the this is the biggest moment of the year for me i'm not gonna lie like this is the moment i've been waiting for um some people wait a lifetime for a moment <laughs> like this as the uh as the uh what's your name from american idol said kelly clarkson i think yeah <laughs> well I tell you what, I'm excited for it. Uh, you know, it's funny because uh, honestly, last year, Webby and I, we were at the parent pre-party. We were at, uh, you know, we saw some of the pro events going on. We played men's doubles indoors that one day. And we had no idea what we were doing, who was there, what was going on, anything like that. It's absolutely insane what we didn't know last year. <laughs> that i mean it it blows me away right i mean i i can't it's it's hard to explain guys like how i i always want to just go back in time and be like hey guys you see that table over there you have 10 of the top pros at that table right next to you and you don't know any one of them yeah like literally the table next to where we were there was tyson mcguffin um and just countless other pros in like yeah i just i i hate myself for not <laughs> knowing who anybody was at the beer city open like we seriously we went there we were like oh like grand rapids has lots of beer let's do a tournament there yeah like there's lots of breweries there that'd be cool to do a tournament there <laughs> <laughs> like that was the only yeah. thing like beer city like that was the like yeah the beer city open we're gonna drink lots of beer yep. we're gonna play this rinky dink tournament <laughs> yeah <laughs> like, what yeah it ended up becoming pretty amazing uh, Andrea Coop has a couple comments in here. She said, I was sitting back to back with you at parent party and neither of you knew. And, and yeah, I mean, that just goes to show you right there. She was right there and yeah, we, we didn't know who she was now. Now I consider her a friend. It's crazy. Exactly. Yeah. Like, yeah. Andrea, she's in the video. When we go back yep. and look at the video now, she's in the video. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, a whole bunch of pros are in the video. Like if you look closely in the background, mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like an Easter egg hunt now. Like go back and watch our, our full Beer City yep. Open video and you're bound to see a whole bunch of pros way in the background because we didn't zoom in on them because we didn't know who they were. <laughs> no idea. But now we do. And uh, now we might be able to, I don't know, maybe have some of them come on, live stream some conversations with them. So pretty oh, excited man, about gonna that. Be, yeah. yeah, I cannot wait. Like when we do the, uh, when we do the live the live stream podcast, uh, the night of the, the welcome party. Like yep. I just can't imagine like how many people we're going to see and we're going to talk to you all are definitely going to want to tune into that. Yep. But before the welcome party, yeah. do you think now is a good time to talk about what's going to happen? <laughs> I think now is the best time to talk about what's going to happen. So a while back there was, a. Uh, a message on Facebook. Somebody posted something on Facebook talking about how they were recognized as the 
best doubles men's player in the entire world when it comes to pickleball. And that person goes by the name of Kyle Yates. Who? Kyle Yates. Never heard um, of him. Yeah, most people haven't. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so I, I, I respond like I made a comment to his message, and I, I congratulated him because that's a huge honor, something mm-hmm. to be very proud of. And uh, and I said that congratulations, that's awesome. Um, but you've never played in a doubles match against Eddie and Webby, and. Uh, and that was that. So I left the message. I was just trying to be. I was just trying to be wacky. <laughs> and uh, Kyle actually responded to that message, and he said, "I'll take you all on in a two versus one match. Let's set it up." So I thought that was hilarious. I thought that was a good goof, a good goof and a spoof. And uh, I liked the comment, and I said, "You're on. Let's do it." And I just brushed it off, or whatever. Um, but then uh, fast forward a few months. And uh, we uh, we had Kyle on our show, and we brought that whole interaction up while he was on the show, and uh, and again, like I, I mentioned it, and I just figured he was joking, and he was like, "No, guys, seriously, if let's make this happen." So, like one thing led to another. We uh, we talked to uh, to Andrea Coop and others that are part of the Beer City Open, and they were like, "Yeah, um, well, let's we can make this happen." So. Not too long ago, I reached out to Kyle again, and I was like, "Hey, if if you were serious about doing this match, um, they'll they'll set it up." And uh, and he was like, "Yeah, man, let's do it." So it's happening. <laughs> we're gonna do yes. a match. It's Eddie and Webby versus Kyle Yates in a two versus one handicap match. <laughs> yeah, two versus one. Man, we're gonna get to like, like honestly, how many people can say first of all that they're gonna get to play? on the same court with Kyle, not very many. I mean, don't get me wrong. I, th- I think Kyle's awesome about making sure that, you know, he he gets a chance to play with people and work with a lot of people out there, but not not very many people in the sport get to say that they've been on the court with Kyle, right? Right. Yeah, and like, it just I, I can't believe this is actually happening. Like, up until a few weeks ago, I still, like, I was like, ah, yeah. he, he's just humoring us. It, this isn't actually going to happen, but like, he, he seems uh, excited about it, and mm-hmm. I, I think it's gonna happen. Like it's 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 gonna happen. We have a time and a place set, and uh, that time and place is going to be next Thursday, which is uh, I don't know my calendar in front of me, but the let me make 11th, sure I get the date right. July eleventh. Yes, next Thursday, July eleventh at three p.m. The main court at Belknap Park. Ooh. It's gonna be Eddie and Webby versus Kyle Yates. Can you believe that? Oh <laughs> yeah, I can't, man. Like this is gonna be awesome. Super excited. I, I I hope we have a bunch of cameras up. We'll make a a fun video about it. But oh, for uh, sure. Yeah, I'm it, sure. I'm sure we can set up a camera or two and and document this. But man, oh man. Um, like I'm super excited about this. But at the same time, like I feel kind of bad. Like I. Like I don't like I'm a, I'm afraid that Kyle's gonna lose sponsorships when we destroy him on the pickleball <laughs> court. I mean. I would hate to be the reason for why Kyle uses, loses uh, sponsorships. Right. What about you? Do, you? do you feel bad about that at all, or do you not care? Yeah, yeah. Curtis, Curtis Smith, if you're listening right now, when we beat Kyle, don't worry. He's going to bounce back. You don't need to pull his paddle tech sponsorship. Like You don't need to discontinue his custom paddle and all that. Like He'll come back from it after we beat him. Don't, don't worry. He'll, right. be, he'll be fine. Yeah, if anything, like this could help. Like this could be like a new ad campaign. Like yeah. once a star has fallen, like you get back up and and try again, and eventually mm-hmm. you might might reach the top again. It'll take a while after losing to a, a couple of guys like Eddie and Webby to uh, recover. But um, yeah, it should be a. Uh, I mean, it should be awesome. But yeah. the, like one thing, like I've told people that about my concern about uh, Kyle losing sponsorships, and everybody laughs at me. Like why why does that happen? Well, that's the thing is you know. Uh, I, I've been, I've been wondering like, what's a good goal for us? Like, like how, like how many points is a good goal for us for this match? Like what should we, where should we set our well, bar so here, at? So here's the thing. Like, uh, we scored zero points in our first <laughs> best two out of three match ever at the yep. beer city open. So I say if, if we score a point, we win, like we're the winners. Okay. All right. I agree. So, yep. <laughs> One point. That's it. That's all we Did need. You hear right? that Kyle? If we if we score a point on you, just 
You're done. We win. Dunzo. Boom. <laughs> um, it, it's, it is funny. I've actually been asking for a lot of advice from people on how to play. Because first of all, playing two versus one alone, you have to change up your strategy a little bit, right? But now you're also playing two versus one against the number one doubles player in the sport of pickleball. You really got to change up your strategy. So uh, have, have you gotten advice from anybody yet? Not really. Everybody just laughs at me when I say I'm, that we're going to play them. They just they, they pretty much just say like you guys are going to get destroyed. I don't know. All that all that does is gives me more fuel. So man, Kyle, you are you are in a world of hurt when you step on the court with Eddie and Webby. I'm telling you. Yes. But um, uh, I do want to say one thing, Eddie. Yeah. Eddie is the stronger player. He's played 4.0 tournaments. I've never done 4.0. Um, so. Or wait, no, 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 no. That's not what. That's not. That's not what I was trying to go with. I've got a three. I've got a silver medal in three point five. So I'm the better player. So if you want to target the weaker player, that's the guy you want to go for right there. This guy. I was right making here. the wrong argument at first. I was making the wrong yeah. argument. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I've been asking a lot of people advice, right? And one person that I asked was actually Tony from Into Pickle. And the reason I paused the video earlier that I was playing is because he ended up giving us some more advice specific to this match so i'm just gonna go ahead oh, nice and play that now piece of advice that webby and i are hoping to get from you from this today i'm i don't know if you know or not but uh right before the beer city open in grand rapids michigan uh the thursday night before webby and i are going to be taking on kyle yates two versus one uh and even though that might sound like we're going to have an advantage. We are still playing against Kyle Yates. And so I guess if you have any tips or strategy for us that we might be able to implement to, uh, to maybe score like two points, that would be awesome. Well, I don't, I don't know if the two versus one is actually an advantage or a disadvantage for you guys because not only is Kyle perhaps the best doubles player in the game, uh, he's also one of the top singles players in the game. So you're going to have to play him on the left and play him on the right. So... Uh, you know, in terms of strategy against Kyle, that's going to be tough. Uh, I was going to suggest, uh, perhaps as I was thinking about it, to uh, have him play left-handed since he normally plays right-handed. Uh, but I actually had the opportunity to play against him left-handed, uh, uh, I don't know, about eight months ago or something like that because he was injured. Uh, and he's still a very formidable opponent, even left-handed. So uh, what I would say is just, uh, you know, keep your balls low and, and just get ready. Keep that bat battle up and ready, man. That's the best I can tell you. Do you think we're better off trying to move him around a lot on the court? I, I would say you definitely want to keep him back as much as you can. Uh, and then you just have to watch for the passing shots because he has excellent passing shots, both cross court and down the line. Uh, so you're going to have to you know, go up to the line, uh, create a wall, and then try and beat him back. If you let him up at the net and let him fly around him at the no volley zone, that's going to be, a, uh, unfortunately, a short match. Yeah. <laughs> Well, awesome, man. I think it's going to be tough any way we look at it. So any advice or strategy, we definitely appreciate. Kyle is well known for uh, eating almonds at night as his energy source. So if you know where he's staying, you can break into his place. Maybe like, I'm not going to tell you lacy almonds, but maybe to steal the almonds, maybe it lowers energy. You might still point in there. Uh, Tony, once again, man, thank you so much for all the great info that you're providing. Again, guys, although this is geared towards me specifically, the hope is that a lot of the things that I'm doing on the court that I can improve at, you guys might be struggling with the same thing as well. So we're hoping that this translates across the board to really help me become that benchmark 4.0 player that I'm looking to become. Awesome, man. Well, good luck with it. And then just keep, keep plugging away at the different pieces. Let's keep building on it. Let's get you down Project 4.0 and get you to 4.0 metal level. All right, let's do it. And if you guys haven't checked out Into Pickle, got to check them out on YouTube on Facebook, tons of great content out there. I watch every single one of the videos as soon as they come out, so make sure you're subscribed to that YouTube channel. Thanks, Eddie. We're doing, our, doing the best we can to try and get the information out there to the Pickleball community. Appreciate your help in doing so. My pleasure, man. We'll talk soon. Did you hear that, Kyle? Next Wednesday night, watch your almonds. That's all I got to say. <laughs> That's right. And uh, all I got to say is, what you going to do, Kyle? What you going to do when Eddie and Webby run wild on you, brother? <laughs> I love it. I love it. I love it. I love it. 
Uh, <laughs> that was some good advice, though. I mean, you know, Tony basically said, keep oh, yeah. those balls low. Like, man, we're just we're just going to have to do our best to, to move them around and keep those balls low, keep them back. Because, I mean, you see him when he's at the line. The guy's dangerous. When he gets on that front foot and he's hopping around over the place, I mean, I don't, I don't know that we have much of a chance. So all we can do is just keep him back, try and move him around, play those corners as best as we can, and keep those balls low, and you know, for, yeah. force him to force him to play the on the defense. For sure, but man, I'm I'm telling you what, like that that is something I still struggle with so much, keeping the ball low. Um, like I I even when I feel like I'm playing good, when I when I watch my footage back, like man, I just I pop that ball up a little little higher than I mean to a lot so that's definitely something I'm I've been working on and uh yeah if I can just keep the ball low he's going down that's right very excited for that match uh man I I actually today I again I just pulled up all the pros who are going to be there too and I'm trying to you know to to keep to keep that list with me so I can know all the matches that I want to go watch, know all the pros that we try and want to get and come on after they, after they win. Uh, and my God, man, uh, once again, there's going to be an amazing group of the top players in this sport in Grand Rapids next weekend at the Beer City Open. Like that's, it's unbelievable. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy. Like, man, yeah, pretty much all the top pros. Like you think yeah. of your favorite top pros, they're most likely going to be at the Beer City Open I can't wait, man. Like I, I am super excited. Uh, this is like, uh, like I said before, this is the big moment of the year for me. This is like my Super Bowl. This is my World Series all rolled into one. Yeah, I cannot wait. Yep. And hopefully, what we can do is after Webby and I play outdoors this time, we're playing outdoors, <laughs> or or we're gonna forfeit so everybody else can play outdoors. But anyway, what we can do is we can take our footage from last year. <laughs> And put it next to our footage from this year and then take a look at at the difference a year can make because to be honest yeah. with you man like i it, it's uncomfortable for me and i'm sure it is for you to like to try and talk about ourselves and and pump ourselves up usually you and i go with like the self-deprecating type of humor but man when you compare so many factors of what happened last summer to now across multiple areas of both of our lives it's pretty incredible. Uh, our pickleball games have significantly increased way, way beyond where I would have expected to be after that event. Right. I'm sure you feel the same way. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, well, like, so my last two tournaments, I played 3.5 and the only reason I did that was because my, my partner is 3.5. So I had no choice. Like normally I would have signed up for 3.0 cause that's my official ranking. I'm, I'm all about playing, what my ranking is. And then once I earn my way up to the next level, I'll go up. But so I played 3.5, the last two tournaments. And I've got to tell you, like we, we were definitely, we held our own nicely. Mm -hmm. And like you said earlier, it's definitely when you play a higher level uh, bracket in a higher level division, like it's, it's much more consistent play. It definitely forces you to, to play better yourself. Um, and like I, I came home with a silver medal at a, a huge tournament with great, great players. So we originally signed up for 3.0 for the Beer City Open. But I mean, you've been doing 3.5 and even 4.0 tournaments lately. I won a silver medal in 3.5. So it's like you and I were talking about it and you've been wanting to do like from the beginning, you wanted to sign up for 3.5. And yeah. I was like, man, our, our, our ratings are 3.0. Yep. Our ratings are 3.0. It, it By default, it put us in 3.0. We should just stick with 3.0. But after the last two tournaments I did, it just, to me, I don't feel right doing 3.0 anymore. Like, I, I feel like both of us are beyond that point. Um, we've each gotten medals in 3.0. And uh, and we haven't gotten a medal together in 3.0, which I was hoping for. But to be honest, I, I personally don't feel right playing in 3.0 anymore in tournaments. I'm with you, man. I mean, to me, like metal medals are awesome. Don't get me wrong. They're great, but I would much rather play many competitive fun games in a tournament where you walk away from it, having a great experience, learning a lot about your game, meeting some great people, than meddling in a, in a division that you're not, you're not suited for. And you see it all the time to me. 
One of my biggest pet peeves is when people play down. I can't stand it. Yes. I hate it. I think it's such a slap in the face to yourself, to your opponents. Don't do it. If you're going to do anything, play up. Because guess what? Yes. Playing up sets you up to learn a lot about your game. And upsets happen. When you walk in with no expectations and you play relaxed and you play chilled against a team that's over there maybe getting a little cocky, who knows what can happen? But you're never going to get that opportunity if you play down. And so I hate it. Play up. Play up. Play your ranking or play up. Don't don't play down. That's silly. Yeah, I agree. Like I like I I love I love a good upset. <laughs> like to me there's nothing better than a good underdog story where the underdog comes out victorious over the the highly favored team that seems on paper to be the much better team. Um yeah, I love that kind of thing and I yeah, if if we could, uh, and, and the fact that we did we did three point five last year in the Beer City mm -hmm. Open, like yeah. uh, I would love the fact, like I would love it if we do three point five again and come home with a medal of some sort. Even if we don't come home with a medal, but we score at least a point in the first match, <laughs> that's a victory. <laughs> that's a that's a huge win. <laughs> yep. Actually, once that's done, we'll just put our paddles down and be like, okay, we win. We're good. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. We got the point. Our our mission yeah. is accomplished. Go ahead and take the victory. Um, cause we, we have a victory right here in our hearts. <laughs> <laughs> could you, could you imagine saying that out there? We've already won in here, deep in here. We've already won folks. That'd be hilarious. <laughs> oh man. Mm. Oh, I, man, I cannot wait. Like, yep. I just, I wish it was tomorrow. I wish it was happening tomorrow, but we just have to wait a week, one week until the big, the big day the big experience that's right it's gonna be fun webby and i are gonna be having a great time we're also gonna be working our asses off i imagine we'll be getting probably an average of four hours of sleep per night which is pretty typical when we when we get together anyway um but i think um i think it's gonna be a great time overall like i said we're gonna be live streaming uh carl schmitz from pro pickleball he's gonna be doing something very similar to what he did at the atlanta open where all of your usual live streamers of matches are all going to be using his channel as the method to be able to get all of the games to you. So if you want to watch any of the matches, which you're going to want to watch them and you're going to want to watch a lot of them, you're going to want to check out pro pickleball for that. That's going to be awesome. Uh, we might be uh, getting, getting into some matches as well. It might be something where we might be moving into in addition to the podcasts and interviews and content uh, maybe some some matches might happen. So super excited about that. Uh, we're also, I guarantee we're going to have a ton of good videos to come up with uh, after the fact for, for that master editor Webby over there to put together and bring to the world. I'm sure we're going to have some great content there. Maybe some breweries, some pickleball action. Uh, who knows? Maybe, maybe some, you know, candids with, uh, with some pro players. You never know. Yeah, you just you never know what's gonna happen. You gotta stay tuned. Keep uh, just keep, keep tuning. Just keep checking in with the Eddie and Webby channel because I have a feeling we're gonna have just a bunch of great content live and after the fact. Yep, absolutely twofold, man. We want to be like the the go to for entertaining, educational, and. I don't know what the other, what the third is. I was trying to come up with something witty on the fly, and it <laughs> totally backfired on me. Yeah, totally, uh, totally didn't work. But it, didn't work. Nice try, I, a valiant effort. Um, but yeah, I just, man, I, I am blown away. Like, just think about it. I, I, like, it's a a year. The yep. a year ago when we did the Beer City Open for the first time. Holy shoot! <laughs> a lot has changed in a year. Yeah, ton has changed. Um, very excited about. This year, actually, one thing that's kind of cool is uh, I, I was watching that video and I was kind of looking at myself like, oh man, I, I feel like I look a little heavier in that video, and I actually, I actually looked back at my weight loss, and that I was 15 pounds heavier than than I am now, and that was still 35 pounds heavier than my heaviest weight when I started to try and lose weight, so. It's it's kind of cool to see that progression over yeah. the last year, and I think that pickleball had a lot to to do with that as well. Oh, for sure. Yeah, I could I could definitely tell that that you have lost a lot of weight since that time last year. Mm -hmm. Um, and even even with myself, I've I've lost at least eleven pounds since that Damn. point. Like from the 
from the time that I started playing pickleball, I, I have lost a considerable amount of weight. And it's, it's definitely absolutely because of pickleball, because I'm being physically active regularly and I'm eating better as a result because mm-hmm. like, I just want to, I want to feel better when yep. I try to, to do stuff like that. When I do, when I do pickleball and I've learned like how much what I consume affects me. So it's just, yeah, pickleball has, uh, has greatly impacted my life in a good way. So many ways. Well, man, we've been going for an hour and 45 minutes on dinking around. This oh, is wow. by far Jeez. our longest dinking around. But I think it's because man. two weeks ago when we had Steve Peranto on, we didn't do a dinking around because we were on his show after. Uh, yep. And the episode before that, Scott Golden jumped on and we really wanted to talk with him. So we haven't had a chance for you and I to even catch up. So super excited we had a chance to today. Anything Hell else you yeah, want to talk this about? Like uh, a- yeah. It was like a, a like a double dose of dinking around, but yeah, it's like it was it was great to uh, it was great to just uh, focus on on you and I like our updates because I feel like yeah. every every week on dinking around we plan on talking about what we've been up to, but we always have such great guests that we uh, that we don't get to that. So it was nice. It was yeah. very nice. If anybody out there has any ideas for maybe some pro players, maybe some people that are involved in the sport that you want us to try and get on the show. During the Beer City Open, let us know. We want to know what you guys want. We, we, I mean, yeah, Webby and I could sit here all day and, and do all the things that we love, and we pretty much do. But if you guys have any ideas, shoot them our way. We're, we'll do whatever we can to try and get those people on and, you know, and, and provide great content that you guys want as well. Oh, yeah. And for anybody that, uh, that prefers when we do have guests, do not worry. We have a, a huge list of amazing guests that are going to be on the show coming up in the very new f- near future. And man, we, we have got a huge surprise to unleash on the world. Um, can't really say too much about it, but man, we've got, uh, we've got something in the works that it's, it's going to be awesome. I, I can't wait. Uh, I wish I could say more about it, but just, uh, you're just going to have to stay tuned to see what we've got in store. We've got so many great plans in store. Got to hate when people do that. And here we are once so again do I. It's, doing it. <laughs> it is, <laughs> it is the worst thing a show can do to tease something and give absolutely no details about it. It is, it is the worst. But I'm telling you, you're, you're going to want to stay tuned because we got something great that we just cannot tell you anything about it. That's right. Well, anything else you want to get into tonight here, Webby? No, I think that's it. I think uh, I think we covered a lot of great content, and uh, man, we both had amazing tournament experiences in the last few weeks. And mm-hmm. I feel like next week is it's gonna be it's it could very well be the the best experience we've had yet, even after all the amazing ones we've already had. I totally agree. I think it could. The Beer City Open was awesome last year, and it's gonna be even better this year. So, guys, honestly, uh, it's next. Thursday through Sunday is when a lot of the events are going to be taking place. Check out our page. Check out Pro Pickleball. Check out the Pickleball Forum, the Pickleball Underground, the Pickleball Uncensored, wherever you guys get your pickleball content from. Keep an eye out because I'm telling you, you're being, you're going to be blown away by the coverage that you're going to have from this absolutely amazing event. Yeah, it's it's going to be epic. It's going to be amazing. It's going to be very cool. You're not going to want to miss any bit of it. So tune into as much of it as you can, even if it's not on the Eddie and Webby channel. Just find whatever you can and tune in. That's right. And on that note, I'm Eddie. And until next time, this is Webby, not Eddie, signing off. So yeah.